What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. A lot of things to cover over this weekend going into the week ahead. It's going to be exciting. We have we were off to a good start in September, that first few days before Labor Day weekend, and everything changed last week. So in this video, I want to go over everything that's happening and a nice update on AMC. Let's get right into it. First off, the big up days are gone as corrections are starting to hit half of the, stock, the S&P 500 stocks. Now, we've talked about this for a long period of time. The S&P 500 has not had a 10% pullback since March of 2020. We are well into the second year of the bull run. And like I said, it is very likely that that 10% hit is going to happen soon. I don't expect a massive crash, but a correction is healthy. You need a little bit of a breather to happen. The S&P 500 has gone 34 days without rising 1% in any of them and it's the longest in 20 months. Now let's talk a little bit about what is fueling that and what to look for coming in the coming week ahead of us. So after the worst week in US equity markets since June, investors will be bracing for more turbulence next week. September is absolutely living up to its reputation as the worst month for US stock markets so far, but the selling has not been extreme. Natural little, little correction is happy for a pullback. So what do we need to pay attention to happening in the week ahead? There are two main things that I'm gonna be looking at. Tuesday is gonna be the consumer price index. Now the investors' eyes have been on this very heavily. Where is inflation going? Is it gonna be transitory like you know Jerome Powell has spoken about? Or is it going to be accelerated? The economy is starting to stagnate a little bit. And what happens is when you have inflation rising and the economy stalling or stagnating, decreasing, people are not making more money. They're not able to afford all of the, you know, the prices being you know, risen as, as, as quickly as it has been. That's where you get that inverse effect. And that is not good because that's when prices of goods have to come down dramatically. And that causes a lot of fear and chaos in the market, which will definitely lead to a much bigger pullback. So eyes are weighed heavily on this. We've been talking about inflation for quite some time. The next thing investors are going to be looking at is going to be this Thursday, which is going to be the U.S. retail sales. What is happening with the effect of the Delta virus? They talk about the increasing numbers of positive rates, the increase in hospitalization, but what effect is it gonna be having as the, in the economy? And what effect is it exactly having in retail? So pay close attention to that happening on Thursday. And now, let's get into this article that was released a couple days ago. AMC Entertainment short seller O'Day Asset Management Head Fund has suffered a massive loss over the past month. Do you remember this article that came out right in early August saying that O'Day lines up to bet against meme stock favorite AMC. Well, let's take a look at where AMC was priced. If you go over to the daily chart and you look at where it was priced at the fifth, anytime in this area, it was 30 bucks a share. We're sitting at 50. That is almost a 100% loss. They're sitting about 70% loss, but still it's close to say almost a 100% loss. Now, if you do look at the charts, seeing, okay, sure, AMC was definitely in a downtrend and hit that bottom, didn't fail to make the higher highs and was, you know, decelerating, 100% looking at the charts. However, because of the massive, you know, amount of attention that this stock gets and because the theater actually is starting to produce some numbers and do well, this is not a stock. I, I cannot believe people continue to bet against this, but keep on going because we are stacking the bills, taking the moolah, from you. So keep on going from this. It's a thing that oversees about 1.5 billion in assets. So it's going to be nice to take a big chunk from you guys. Next up on the movie theaters is this right here saying that the box office success from the latest Marvel movie is going to have three more major Disney films are confirmed for exclusive theater release. Now, let me tell you this these companies, these producers, such as Disney and Paramount and so forth, they want their movies to be released in theaters. It attracts a smaller amount of audience, but the amount of capital and revenue that they get from movies being released in the theaters is much higher than they're gonna get from the pennies that they get from these streaming services. They want their, their movies to be exclusively released in theaters. They had no choice but to shift. They had no choice, you know, Hollywood had no choice but to adapt to just how, you know, users and viewers were changing their lifestyles and changing their experiences by utilizing online streaming, watching movies at home rather than going out to the theaters. If the theaters can continue 
to pump out these numbers and attract people to get their butts in the seats, more and more, you know, uh, releases are going to be exclusive towards the theater. It's exactly what they want. It was like I said, they were just forced to change. It's the same thing with, you know, Disney coming out with Disney Plus, you know, and ESPN coming out with ESPN Plus. I mean, the amount of cable subscribers decreased. They have, they have to adapt their business. But if they can see some success as they have, this is going to continue to rise, which is going to bring more and more revenue for the theaters. So this is something that's going to be a positive news, especially for the rest of the year. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we take one quick look at the charts are the 13F filing. So if you can see here recently, a lot of these indexes did a rebalancing, which means they were they sold off some shares, bought some more shares, rebalanced these, you know, these index funds in order to keep up with the current prices. And as you can see, all these funds in here, they added to their AMC position, which has led to some of the buying pressure and the additional price being risen over the past couple of weeks for AMC. Great news for us. But here's where I'm looking at this from an even deeper perspective is that in times of frothiness, like we're at, the market is getting toppy, it's starting to pull back, let's say it gets over in that correction territory, a lot of big investors will opt away from investing in individual stocks. And yes, when times become dramatic, they will get out of stocks altogether, switch it over to bonds, hold on to cash, bet against the market, and so forth. That's that's like I said, in times of you know, you know, you know, dramatic pullbacks and you know, really hard crashes. But in times of corrections, in times of just overextension, all right, where back in last year you were able to bump it into high tech and growth stocks and make 100% in two months on your money. When those times are gone, which clearly they are, I mean, there is a little bit of money being, you know, shoved back over into penny stocks, but, you know, money, th those, those easy high growth plays such as, you know, Neo running 100% and so forth, all your SPAC plays. And when those times are over, a lot of investors will choose to, they don't want to get out of the market, but they'll invest in ETFs, they'll invest in funds. It's a little bit safer. You're still getting the action of the stock market. Maybe the price, your gains will not be as high, but your losses are minimized because it's spread over a, a, new, a, a, a numerous amount of stocks. So if more money gets shifted over into these funds, it's gonna help for the buying pressure of AMC because AMC is weighted heavily in a numerous amount of funds. As you can scroll, this whole first page is just covered with funds. So I'm gonna be closely looking at that going forward. I am happy to see that, especially because the S&P is probably going to break below that 50 moving average. It's only a matter of time as you look at a daily chart on the SPY where you can just watch these amount of touches before eventually it just comes through. Is it going to happen this month? I don't know. Is it going to happen by the end of the year? I would expect so. I think the percentage, the percentage chance of the S&P pulling a 10% correction in the second year of the bull run is, is well over 50% and we haven't hit it yet. And there's only so many more months before we get back to that March, you know, that April of 2022, which will bring a com full completion to the second year of the bull run. So it's like I said, it's only a matter of time and investors are going to start to switch over to some of these funds. So as far as AMC, where it looks like on the chart, it made that solid breakout above that heavy 48 resistance. We get some nice consolidation over that area and you better believe it. 48 is going to act as a solid, solid support for us. We spent a good amount of time, if you remember back in here, all the way from, you know, the 50s to even 65 range. So I expect this to hang out there for quite some time. It would be nice to be able to form more of a base you know, I felt like we had some consolidation back in the 50, 60s, you know, in in mid to late June, but we had no support built up before that massive run up that it wasn't, you know, sustained. And that's why if we can find a little bit more consolidation, have this run up to not be so dramatic is going to mean like the pullbacks and the support levels are going to be much stronger going forward. So keep that in mind throughout this week. I'm excited because like I said, I've been preparing. I'm telling everybody in the group make your plays shorter. It's not that I like, you know, playing short plays or staring in front of my computer or day trading, you know, any more than swing trading. I mean, swing trading can be massive, massive gains. It's very hands-off, especially when you're running a business, but it's just not the market that we're in. So we get a nice healthy pullback in the S&P, be able to form some consolidation. You know, that's when you're going to get a nice, you know, money pumped into it. And if you're new to investing, this is where you can learn everything. Learn everything, keep that, you know, preserve that capital for when that next run-up happens. That's where you're going to be able to make a bunch of your money. So I'll see you in the next one, guys.